It's Gail with Everything Nash. We're here with one of my most favorite people ever, Jimmy Allen. It has been like over a year, I think, right? It's been a little. It's been some time in between the last visit. <laughs> What's happened this last year? I mean, you know, lots of things have happened. Yeah. Uh, you know, had a kid, another one. No big deal. Got engaged. Yeah, my daughter should be one March 1st. Uh, so mm -hmm. did that, got engaged, uh, went to Disney World multiple times. Uh, got a book deal, got a kid's book coming out in July. I wrote a kid's book. Okay. Uh, Released a killer album that we're going to talk about. Yeah, that was fun. Um, the Buddy James album. Uh, I, I got to perform on the CMAs, the CMTs, um, the ACMs, and then I got to do uh, Dick Clark's Rockin' New Year's Eve. Okay, so I want to talk about Betty James. When, I'm not exaggerating when I tell you I probably listen to it two or three times a week. Oh, wow. Seriously. It's, I don't know that I've ever listened to an album that made sense to me so much, impacted me so much from start to finish. So just talk about writing all seven songs, dude. They're amazing. And getting like every country music star in the world to sing on it with you. Um. It was something I, I wanted to um, start to leave a, uh, 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 the legacy of my grandmother and my father uh, through my music. And so I reached out to some of their favorite artists, some of mine, um, and just kind of went from there. Like with Good Times Roll, uh, <clears throat> me and Nelly actually wrote that together with uh, Zach Kraut. Zach, uh, man, so many Zachs. What's <laughs> There are a lot of Zacks in country music. So many. It's too many. That's the problem. <laughs> I'm about to start changing people's names myself. Uh, Zach Kale. Zach Kale. Because yeah. uh, I write a lot with Zach Kale, Zach Dyer, and Zach Cross. Too many. Uh, uh, but yeah, Zach Kale. Um, the Noah song I did was actually written by Noah, Tyler Hubbard, D. Mile, uh, and someone else. Uh, they pitched that to me. A Free Was a Highway I wrote. I wrote that like two years before Brad even jumped on it. Um, it was just when I was listening to that song, I was like, man, this sounds like a song Brad would do. Uh, the Why Things Happen song. That's um, such a great lyric, by the way. Thank you. Um, me, my bass player, Tate Howe, um, uh, um, Carrie Barlow and Brandon Day. We wrote that 2020, the day after Kobe died. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> then I reached out to Darius and, and reached out to Charlie about it. Uh, when this is over, uh, that's another song that was sent to me. But when I was listening to it, I could hear the voices on it. So I reached out to Rita Wilson, uh, Torrin Wells, and then uh, the Oak Ridge Boys. My grandma's favorite group was Oak Ridge Boys. Uh, I love those guys. Uh, and it's so crazy because how I got up with them is William Lee Golden from the Oak Ridge Boys. His son, Craig, is my tour bus driver. <laughs> So he made that uh, connection for me. Uh, the Drunk and I Miss You, uh, me and Mickey talked about doing songs before together. Um, so I reached out to her. Uh, man, what else is on there? Oh, Made for These. Uh, I wrote that in L.A. with um, uh, this girl named Riley and my buddy Rob. Um, then after that, I texted to Tim. was like, hey, what do you think about this song? Do you want to sing it with me? He was like, dude, yeah, i totally do it. I was like, let's go. <laughs> Okay, and Tim just said, um, and you retweeted it when I wrote about it, which was so sweet of you, but you elevated him as a singer. That's, for me, that's the craziest thing ever. I'm like, you're Tim McGraw. Because <laughs> like, <laughs> I remember I sent him the vocal. He said, oh, so you're really going to make me sing. <laughs> <laughs> which we all know Tim can actually sing. It's fine. It's great. He, wasn't, he had nothing to worry about. Did, he, did it give you a little bit of validation to have all these legendary artists say yeah i want to sing with you on this it did um you know we uh as artists the biggest compliment are when your peers and people you've looked up to for so long um appreciate what you do and i feel like that's the biggest way they say they respect you as an artist and a songwriter when they're willing to do a song with you that they didn't even write mm -hmm. um, <laughs> especially it's early in my career, you know, um, for those guys and girls that are just, you know, they don't, they don't need me, <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, so for them to want to do it, it was super cool. Let's talk about um, Freedom Was a Highway. Give me the story behind that one. Um, 
So I wrote it with uh, Ash Bowers and um, Matt Rogers. Uh, for me, the song was kind of just about going back and thinking about like the favorite roads I used to drive down in Delaware. Um, you know, whether it was summertime, uh, whether it was winter, uh, you know, there's memories attached to each road for me. Um, and for me, when right now, I just wanted, you know, a nostalgic song to kind of tie me into home. And I think I've heard stories when certain people hear it, they think of their favorite streets in their hometown. Because um, everybody has, most people either love where they're from or they love where they live. But they can, you know, picture, you know, driving around during the summer with the windows down uh, in their favorite location. Uh, and I feel like that song is a cool summer ride around sing along song. Are you working on, I want to get to the Charlie Pride Darius Rucker song too, but are you working on new music? What's your plans moving forward? Yeah, I am um, going to name for a while my albums after streets. Uh, I, I did Mercury Lane, the street I grew up on, then I did the Betty James uh, album, and then the next album is going to be called Tulip Drive. So trying to figure out if we're going to release Tulip Drive first, or I'm sitting on a bunch of other collaborations. I don't know. We might do a, a, a Betty James deluxe version. Cause I'm sitting on so many collabs right now, like just in the bank, and I'm just like, let's 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 just put them out. And see Heard what happens. First, um, I support that idea. By the way, if my opinion matters. I'm all for another collaborations album. I love it. I love collaborations. I think, I think it's fun. Like I've had, you know, someone at a different label ask me, said, Jimmy, you think you're doing too many collabs? I said, No. I said, In every other genre, they collab all the time. And if you look at the creation process of a song, the whole thing is a collaboration until the performance of it. The songwriting is a collaboration, the production is a collaboration, the mixing, the mastering, the marketing plan around it. Everything else is a collaboration except for the performance most of the time. And, you know, I love working with other artists. You know, they bring energies to they bring energy to the song, you know, um, uh, somebody was like, well, do you think that'll hurt your career? I said, no. I said, I'm confident in who I am, that I'm, I don't mind sharing a song with someone else. You know what I mean? And especially when it goes both ways, you know, someone else can bring energy to the song that you couldn't bring. And also you get a chance to introduce each other to each other's listeners. You know, um, it's one of the best marketing things out there, in my opinion. <laughs> uh, so your song you have with Darius Walker and Charlie Pride. Mm -hmm. What did it mean to you to have Charlie Pride sing with you? Man, it was it was the best thing ever. It was like imagine someone in your life that they're the reason why you feel comfortable doing something. The ultimate inspiration. And so for me being a black kid growing up in Delaware, um listening to country music, and then we didn't really see anybody on TV that looked like us. So the thought of being a country artist was cool, but how realistic was it? You know, so for me, he was the one that made it possible uh, for me to see an example. OK, this is doable. Um, so to do a song with him and, you know, become friends with him, uh, it was to me, that was bigger and better than any award I could ever get. It doesn't get no better than singing with Charlie Pride for me. You still miss him? Oh, for sure. All the time. We used to talk every other Sunday on the phone. Really? He was a sweet man. I only got to interview him once, and the interview lasted like 30 minutes because he just kept talking, and I just listened. Uh, I love it when uh, he, I, uh, he would start talking. He'd be like, oh, what was the name of that place? Uh, 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 uh. Uh, and he'd go, oh, I'd be like, man, look, I ain't got that much time. Let's just continue the conversation. When you figure it out, <laughs> let me know later. <laughs> I appreciate so much. Through You talked about how he was a model for you, Darius Rucker, through the racial challenges of the last year. You've been such a voice of reason and kindness, and I appreciate that so much. You know, I, I tell people all the time, people look up to two people in life. They either say God or they say Martin Luther King. And the thing about both of those figures are they're all about forgiveness. You know what I mean? Um, they're about, you definitely hold people accountable. They're about forgiveness. You know, if Martin Luther King can forgive people that hung his family members, like, come on. 
You know what I mean? Like it, it's 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 easy for everyone wants forgiveness, but not everybody wants to give it. You know what I mean? And when people forget, forgiveness isn't about the other person. It's about you. It's about you releasing that weight off of you so you don't have to carry all that. And the only way to make the world a better place, which we all say we want, is to go through the hard stuff. You know what I mean? The only way to get to where you want to go is to go through it. You can't go around it. You can't go over it because it's still going to be there. And I feel like that's the problem with so many things in the world. You keep sweeping stuff when you're, it's like walking on a rug. If you keep sweeping crap under the rug, eventually that rug is hard to walk on. And at some point you got to deal with it. And I feel like it's a lot easier to just deal with each pile of dirt by itself other than making this big old mountain out of it and want to come back and handle it. And by that time it's too late. Um, so no matter how difficult I feel forgiveness or whatever it might be or how unpopular it might be, um, for me, that's what I'm going to do. Because I don't, I don't know, I never wake up in the morning and say, hmm, what can I do today that people will approve of? I don't really care what people think about me. I never have. I probably never will because I feel like the only opinion that matters of you is yourself because no matter what you do, people are either going to agree or not agree. So I feel like the best thing you can always do in life is make decisions that you can sleep with at night. And that's just what I try to do. Can I vote for you for president? <laughs> I got to run for mayor in Milton, Delaware first. <laughs> All right, switching gears. Never be a president. That's the most boringest job in the <laughs> world. Like, I, I don't understand how people get into politics. It just looks so boring. You sitting around in a suit and meetings all day. No, I wear, I'd be wearing sweats. Like, <laughs> I've, met, <laughs> I've met tons of mayors for dinner, politicians. You know what I wear? Sweats and a hoodie. I'm comfortable. <laughs> Well, if you become president, you can enact that as a dress code. How, okay, I want to talk, we're going to do something fun before I let you go. But first of all, how are wedding plans and how are your children? Kids are good. Uh, wedding plans, I think, are good. I got to check with Lex on that. You know, I'm letting her plan. I'm just going to show up. Is it like, are you waiting until COVID's over or big wedding, small wedding? We were going to do it last year. The only reason that we didn't do it last year wasn't really for COVID. It was, wasn't because we, the, we were nervous about COVID. It was more about a lot of people lost their jobs. Yeah. And we didn't want people to financially stress out over coming to a wedding. We didn't want people to come to the wedding and then put themselves in a financial bind. And then we didn't want to have it and people that were going to come not be able to come because of financial restrictions. So uh, we're supposed to do it at some point this year. Um, or uh, some point, actually, I'm not sure. Like, I've gotten a bunch of emails and, like, requests. People reach out. Hey, uh, Jimmy, you think we can get, like, your wedding exclusive pictures? Yeah, if you got a check. <laughs> 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 I'm not doing this whole free exclusive stuff. No, I'd rather post a picture myself. Like, no, you got a check. We can talk. If you don't, nah, you good. You'll see what everybody else does. <laughs> Oh my gosh, Jimmy, I forgot how much I love talking to you. Why can't we do this like once a month? Can we just like do a catch up once a month? I am down. All right. Okay. okay. So before I let you go, we're going to do 11 questions. Okay. All right. These are easy. Favorite food? French toast. Uh, I probably know the answer to this already, but favorite vacation spot? Oh, Disney World. Yeah. Uh, when have you been the most starstruck? That's a good question for you. Hmm. Probably uh, the first time I met Charlie, the first time I met Darius, and the first time I met Rob Thomas. Yeah, I could see that. Um, biggest pet peeve? Lazy people. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they uh, favorite Nashville spot? Uh, favorite Nashville spot? Restaurant St. Anejo's. Okay, can we talk for a second about the jalapeno margarita? And that red sangria. Oh, boy. All day long. I mean, <laughs> <and everywhere. laughs> um, what's a movie you can watch over and over again? Uh, the Santa Claus. Good one. Uh, if you weren't a singer, what would you be? Uh, probably a stand-up comedian. I could see that. Definitely not a politician. Uh, what's your go-to cocktail? Uh, makers and ginger or crown apple and ginger. Mm. 
my husband does bourbon and ginger ale a lot. Apparently there's something about the ginger and the bourbon. I don't know. I don't drink bourbon. Um, who's a surprising artist on your playlist? Surprising artist? I don't know. I listen to most random stuff. Like I'll, I'll literally go from for King and Country to Slipknot to Corn to Keith Urban to Kanye. It's literally all over the place. Like all. I, uh, pause. I interviewed for King and Country, and their fans are crazy. Oh like, yeah, they're they're legit. Okay, two more. Uh, what's your worst habit? My worst habit, probably moving at my own pace. Other people hate it. Like, cause I'm late a lot for stuff, but I just feel like, I don't know. I don't like to rush moments when I'm in a moment, I'm in it. You know, um, I'd rather be 10, 15 minutes late and the person I'm working with or the interview is the best version of myself rather than show up on time and be dull. So I got the best version of you then. Yeah. And I overslept. It was a rough night. <laughs> Okay, last one. What's something people might be surprised to know about you? Um, surprised? Mm -hmm. well, I don't think people, be, people kind of getting the gist that I'm kind of weird, but probably I still have these two stuffed animals that my dad gave me when I was three. Still, I still have them, and... Uh, I, uh, as much as it seems like I don't plan and I don't care, I do. I overcare and I actually plan a lot, but it comes off as uh, spontaneity. So I guess you would say it's planned spontaneity.